So, you know, I have plans to make like, you know, another serious YouTube video because I get a surprising amount of like really high quality engagement on YouTube. But the thing about serious YouTube videos is that they're a lot of work. So let's talk about one of my favorite topics, which is phones. So, uh, you know, a couple, I say a couple weeks ago, it's more like a couple months ago now, I totally redid my VOIP setup. Uh, I had been running free PBX and it's just, I don't know, it was getting to be such a hassle just dealing with free PBX and Sangoma, which is a company that I just hate. Um, so I, I dumped that and I'm just, I'm doing it all myself with Asterisk now, which is kind of more work up front, but you know, the thing is, I'm honestly not sure that it is more work up front because it's just, when I control all the configuration, it's so much easier to troubleshoot why things aren't working. But the point is, I redid the VOIP setup and then I spent some time um, messing with codecs and I mentioned to my husband that, oh, I can enable the, the video codec so that you can do video calls for the two people ever in the history of telephony who want a video phone. Well, let me tell you, my husband is one of the two people ever who wants a video phone. And so he bought an older Cisco, um, you know, video capable IP phone. One piece of advice, never buy Cisco. Um, we do have it working, but they're just, you have to like reverse engineer the XML provisioning file that CUCM would generate. Um, and it's a big hassle. So my husband has a video phone and now I'm jealous and I want a video phone. Now, for a long time, the IP phone on my desk um, has been... I'm sorry, everything is covered in dust. In my defense, this is New Mexico and I have a cat. Um, for a long time, this has been the, the phone on my desk. This is... Uh, uh, I don't even know, and you for sure can't read it either. This is a Grand Stream... Wow, it does not... I think the model number is under the desk stand. So you're not going to find out what model it is, but it's a grand stream phone. It's not a very new one. Now that I'm not holding the camera, it's easier. It's a GXP2130. So I figured what I would do is I would just replace it with another grand stream model that is video capable. Um, I usually buy grand stream VOIP phones because they're cheap. Uh, but also I've had, you know, I've generally had a pretty good experience with them. Nothing is great, but they're like reasonably easy to configure. And I looked around on eBay. I found this GXV3240. This is a, uh, I think it's either one or two generations old. The earliest reference that I found to this online in the first page of Kagi results was 2018. So it's at least that old. I'd venture it's a little bit older than that based on some things we'll see. Um, the, I bought this used. The previous user was using it with IPVideotalk.com, I think. I'm not even... Like, that's just, that was the configuration when I, when I got this in the mail, is that it was set up to connect to ipvideotalk.com. Um, I've, you know, gotten it configured with my own VOIP setup now, and it's joined what I am, you know, rationalizing by calling a, a collection of telephones. Of course, I should, you know, make clear this is one of two phones on my desk. I also have, um, my beloved Merlin, uh, there on my desk, but... Let's check out a genuine video phone. So here's the first thing to know about this. Um, it runs Android. I have complained before, I'm gonna keep fiddling with the camera, I've complained before about the appification of a lot of computing equipment, and I think this in a lot of ways shows the downsides of that. It's, uh, it's kind of noticeably slower than the simpler Grandstream phone that I had in a lot of ways. Um, and one of the reasons that I bought this older model, besides price, I got this for, I think, $60 shipped, which I consider a reasonable price for a used IP phone that works well. I think one of the newer generations, I would have been looking more around $200, which is just more than I wanted to spend. But another reason is that this has physical buttons. The next generation after this of Grandstream products, for the multimedia phone specifically, they drop the buttons and the whole body of the phone becomes a big touchscreen. I'm sure the big touchscreen is nice because you'll see that the on-screen keyboard on this phone is a goddamn joke. Um, but I just, like, what's the point of having a desk phone if you aren't going to be able to dial by touch? You know, I just, I would not countenance having a phone on my desk that has no physical buttons on it. Let's take a look at uh, at the Grand Stream. Um, 
it's a phone, it does normal phone things, but it's kind of weird as a phone because unlike, unlike my old Grand Stream, which had, um, you know, line appearance buttons and then also this set of multifunction keys on it, this has nothing. It doesn't have line appearance buttons. It doesn't have multifunction keys. It has a replacement for the multifunction keys that I'll show you. But it's, it, I found it a little awkward because when I first set this up and sat down with it, I was literally like, I don't, how do I dial a call, right? Um, if I just dial numbers, does it, oh, it opens. Okay, so that's, you can just start dialing numbers. But you can also push the phone icon to open the phone like app, basically. Or this is just like a shitty Android launcher. So it's got, by default, this is just default. I haven't changed any of this. Um, it's got this widget in the middle that uh, shows the IP addresses, if that's the main thing you care about, of the phone. And also, um, you know, your, your configured line appearances. So we can make a phone call, like uh, good old-fashioned human beings. Let's just do this. Prove to you that uh, it has some, some normal phone functionality. I've noticed with this phone that sometimes call setup takes a very long time. That could be something about asterisk, but I, I haven't seen the same issue with other phones. So it seems to be something about this. Here we go though, we're on a, we're on a phone call. I'm realizing I don't, I don't know if you can actually hear that. It's not that interesting anyway, cause it's just the, uh, it's WWV, it's, it's just ticking. You know, let's call a little, a phone number that's a little more fun. This is what I usually use just for testing. Thank you for calling AT&T. Oh, Call thank you, AT&T. <clears throat> so it works as a normal phone. Um, I'm going to show off a video call in a moment because I, you know, I got to save the best for the last so you have a reason to watch this whole stupid long video. Uh, but let's check out some other things that are kind of weird. One of the things I think is strangest about this phone is the choice of the default uh, configuration of the launcher. So... Like, there's settings, and obviously, whatever, it makes sense to have settings be easy to access. But there's a file manager here by default, which is a little weird to me because, you know, usually uh, Android devices really, they're not as far as iOS in terms of, like, you are not allowed to see the file system, but they really usually under or, or de-emphasize uh, the file system. So it's a weird choice to me. Like, what is the average user going to do digging around, you know, in, in the, the file manager here? There is a Grand Stream App Store. I really love that this has star ratings and all apps seem to have really terrible ratings, but I messed around a bit and I can't see any way to rate things. Like this is the, the most basic app store. So I don't know, I'm gonna, let me zoom in on the screen. You can see a little better. I don't know where those ratings come from, but it's funny how many apps in the uh, Grand Stream App Store have a one star review. Um, I installed Angry Birds, naturally. We're going to take a look at that in a minute. I might as well install Fruit Ninja while I'm, uh, while I'm thinking about it. Along with an app store comes, like, pretty normal apps. So, like, there's a web browser. I was pretty excited to see that because I thought, actually, having a web browser on this might be kind of cool because I have some stuff on my local network. If I could put, like, shortcuts on the launcher, then, you know, I might, I might use it. I actually saw someone... Um, selling a similar model on eBay who they had like uh, an IP camera viewer and they said uh, on the, the home screen, you could see in the photo, and they said something in the description about like, oh, I only really use this to look at a surveillance camera and, and now I don't have a use for it anymore. And I thought, well, hey, I could probably do the same thing, right? So I, I load up the, uh, the web browser. I go to my, my intranet, if you will, and then I go hit the, hit the button to look at the surveillance cameras and you can you can barely see this it's it's real weird how it renders on this browser and i don't know i don't i don't think that this will ever work oh it just put up a bunch of errors the version of firefox that's on this phone is very old and in fact the very first thing that i tried to do when i launched it is to look at my favorite website in the world and ain't nothing, right? No cipher overlap. I Computer.rip is, it's configured a little bit strictly. I think it only allows TLS 1.2. I, I don't know what the newest TLS revision that this thing supports is, but it's not, 
It's not recent, that's for sure. So it's really hard. Between uh, SSL issues, the old JavaScript support on, and like probably everything support in this browser, and just how slow it is, it's really hard to get anything to actually work in this web browser. I think I was pushing a bunch of buttons in here earlier and like, it, it was amazing how few like websites or web apps I could come up with that like worked acceptably well. Um, ignoring even the fact that this is a tiny screen. So this thing's pretty slow. Is that like a big unstoppable problem with it? Well, the first time I launched Angry Birds, it force quit before it got to the menu. And I was cracking up about, you know, how much of a failure that was. But the second time I launched it, it worked fine. And what I've actually found um, is that it seems to work acceptably well. Let me get um, welcome to my Twitch stream. Uh... I mean, like, frame rate wise you know, I think this is totally acceptable. So, obviously, this is a pretty old... You know, my husband said, install Arknights, um, and maybe later I'll try to figure out if I can, like, sideload Arknights onto this thing, but I don't think it'll even launch. There's some other kind of funky choices as far as what this comes with by default. Um, I haven't changed anything on the launcher, so one of the default things on the launcher is an FTP server, um, it's a little weird to me as far as, like, I don't think that many users would know what to do with this, but, I mean, honestly, it's kind of nice because a thing about Grandstream, Grandstream phones have trash ringtones on them. This one is way better than usual because it has the normal Android set of ringtones, which, in my opinion, is, like, inexcusably bad, but at least, you know, it, it's better than one of the older Grandstream phones I have that only comes with, like, four ringtones and every one of them is hilariously unlike a phone. I just I just want my phone to sound like a phone. Is that too much to ask for? The only thing, if we go to sound, go to our ringtone, it's all just like the normal stuff from this super old version of Android, which by the way is 4.4, except for it's got these Belcore files. I don't know how much you can hear these. Let me, uh, we're moving the microphone. I'm so sorry for how that'll sound. So the fact that the names of those are Belcor is, you know, obviously suggestive that they come from some uh, AT&T, you know, product. I, I don't know if I was, maybe I'm just not enough of a phone nerd and I should recognize these. Okay, so almost immediately after recording that, I thought about it just a little bit more and I realized that since it's just the war bubble with different cadences, that's almost certainly distinctive ringing. Um, distinctive ringing was, I remember being advertised back in the 90s, it was a feature where you could have um, distinctive ring, ring cadences on the same phone line. I think some, some telcos branded it as like, as like teen ringing, so that if you had an annoying teenager who got too many phone calls that you were answering, you could get them a separate phone number that shared the same phone line, but had a different ring cadence. Um, so you, you could tell from the phone ringing who the call was for. Distinctive ringing was the like proper name for that feature. And it turns out that yes, Belcore-DR1 through Belcore-DR5 um, are kind of the, the well accepted standards for uh, indicating distinctive ringing and specifically for indicating in a SIP header which distinctive ringing pattern should be used. So I think that probably kind of tells us why the ringtones are there and are called Belcore DR1 through 5. It's, it makes sense. It's still a disappointment to me. I was honestly really hoping that it would have the Merlin tones preloaded because IP phones from like the big manufacturers from like Cisco and Avaya often do. Um, that said, it didn't. The Merlin ringtones are in my mind the only acceptable noises for a telephone to make. So I'm just going to have to put them there myself. Uh, good thing they gave us an FTP server on the phone. That'll make that a snap. And it was common for especially digital business phone systems to have different ring cadences because they let you have different ringtones 
for your different lines on a lot of nicer phones. And honestly, you didn't even have to be that fancy. If you worked in an open office environment or like in a bullpen, my first uh, like real, you know, big boy job was in um, a security operation center. And I sat in like a bullpen with other security analysts. And sometimes a phone would ring and like three people would pick up their phones because for some reason, I was like the only one who realized that the Cisco IP phones we had had multiple ring cadences that you could choose between so that you could tell when it was your phone versus someone else's. And of course, as I think I've discussed before somewhere online, the ring cadences that you get on the older Cisco IP phones are copied over from Merlin and uh, were kind of made particularly famous by the TV series 24. But those... Those sounds, they're kind of almost like a Cisco brand at this point, but Cisco got them through kind of a confusing series of, of acquisitions from AT&T, which first introduced them uh, on their Merlin phone system. So um, let's see, that's a bunch of stuff about this phone. Is there anything else really interesting to show you? I'm trying to think before we go all in with a video calling experience. I don't think so. I could talk a bunch about configuring this phone. It's got a web interface for configuration, which is okay. Um, but none of that's really that interesting. If you've ever used a Grandstream phone before, this will be familiar, except for the fact that somehow every Grandstream phone has a different ver- There are an impossible number of different versions of the Grandstream web configuration interface, uh, such that like no two Grandstream phones I've owned has ever had the same web interface, but- you know, whatever. They all basically work the same. They just rearrange them every generation so that you have to figure out where things are again. Let's do a video call. Just for the sake of easy demonstration, um, it would be funny to call my husband, but I think he's probably on the way on the way back from campus at this point. So for the sake of easy demonstration, I'm going to call uh, my laptop, which is sitting next to me. Um, when I dial a call, it, it will never... So... A lot of phones that I have have this thing where you dial the number and then you got to wait for a while. And the reason for that, people who've messed with IP phones before will probably recognize, is because I have not configured the dial plan on really any of my phones. That's just out of laziness. The thing is, the vast majority of IP phones, if they don't have a configured dial plan, meaning they don't... The, the whole point of this dial plan thing is that the phone has to know when you're done dialing. Like... Is that, is that a whole phone number? This phone doesn't know right now because the dial plan isn't configured, so it doesn't know if I'm done dialing or if I'm just being really slow. I think a lot of people who've messed with IP phones will realize as well that on most IP phones, pressing pound functions as like an inner key and will cause the phone to dial the number that you entered. Um, other phones, though, or otherwise, though, if you don't know about the pan, pound key, you just have to dial a number and then wait for like a five second timeout. And in fact, even my Merlin system works that way because it's connected to an ATA ultimately, which I have never configured a dial plan in. So um, when you pick up the Merlin, you dial, you got to wait like four seconds or hit pound because even over DTMF, the ATA takes pound to mean that you're done dialing. On this phone, it's interesting. If you just enter a number and then ignore it, it, it like times out and goes back to the home screen. It doesn't dial. So a uh, pound does work to uh, to complete a call, but I think they really want you to push one of these green buttons. And that kind of makes sense because that's how it determines whether or not video will be active. So I'm gonna dial the extension that a software client on my laptop is uh, is connected to, and then we'll hit the video call button. Once again, it, it seems like this phone takes a long time to connect calls. I'm going to look at the asterisk console later and kind of trace it out and see what's up. Um, but my laptop is ringing now. I will go ahead and hit the answer with video button. And there we go. Take a look at this. I don't know enough about the history of um, video phones to like confidently tell you when the first video phone hit the market. But just totally going off of memory... I think it was as early as the 70s, and I think, I, I want to say the first, like, real commercial video phone was uh, in the United Kingdom. It might have been a GPO service. I, I'm very fuzzy on this, but there were some real early video phones that put the video over 
I don't think necessarily a voice quality circuit early on, but certainly over like a least, like a data grade least line. Um, terrible video. But like video phones have been a thing that people have wanted for a long time. And it's funny that nowadays it's like totally unremarkable, right? Because obviously like our cell phones, we can use all manner of different video chat apps. Um, whoa, the audio, auto exposure on my laptop has just gone completely insane. There's the, uh, the ceiling light is in frame and I think that's um, giving it some trouble. The screen on this phone is indeed not very good. Um, the, the camera's not at like a perfect angle, but it doesn't, it doesn't look that good even when you look at it straight on and the brightness is all the way up right now. So that's definitely a disappointment with this phone. The video calling experience is pretty normal. Tap and controls appear. We can make the video big. We can swap, um, you know, which, whether local or remote video is primary. This button saves a screenshot, um, and I was able to find those in the file browser. They do show up in a slightly weird place, I think. I had to look around for them for a minute. And options doesn't have anything that interesting in it. You can toggle SRTP on and off, which is a, a media encryption. I'm actually surprised that it says enable SRTP because... Uh, interesting. Both ends of this call should support SRTP, so I'm not sure why it's enabled by default, but, you know, whatever. That's just some SIP stuff to figure out. Um, one thing that is kind of cool about this is if we hit call details, it gives us pretty good info on the codex in use, which is convenient for troubleshooting. A nice thing about this IP phone, it is new enough that it supports everything you're probably going to want to use. It supports Opus for audio, it supports H.264 for video, and it defaults to 720p. I think that's just what it's capable of, uh, basically. Um, oh, since this is just running Android, it can multitask in a way that desk phones normally can't. So I'm actually still in the call right now, and I can go surf the web. Um, and then we can go back to the call Chrome and, uh, we can terminate. Uh, so let's see the very last thing I want to show you about this phone. I think this has been kind of a disorganized ramble of a video, but I also think that's what I promised up front is I mentioned that it has none of the multifunction keys that a desk phone would normally have. They have made them software. So this MPK app with the terrible icon, this is basically your multifunction keys. The thing I like about this is that it's user configurable. So I can go to add and we've got speed dial, BLF, transfer, intercom. Um, so I have kind of all the normal stuff that you might put on a multifunction key. Uh, it's in this app. I really wish that they were physical buttons, but it is cool that this is user configurable because, you know, most IP phones even... This stuff isn't user configurable. It has to be done through the web interface or through a provisioning system. So that is kind of a cool thing about this phone. That said, just give me buttons, right? Like, I know it's got this many buttons, but if, like, you saw my thing about keyboards, all I want in life is more buttons, right? Like, this Merlin, that is a healthy number of buttons. And the thing is, this is not the biggest Merlin desk set either. The largest one had this this big row on the right. The largest one had two rows of this height. And I wish I had that one. They're just a little harder to find on uh, on eBay for whatever reason. So just, I want buttons. I want buttons. I definitely require a dial pad. I would love to have physical multifunction keys, but we've had to compromise here. I still get my dial pad. The multifunction keys are software. I think that is actually everything interesting I want to say with this phone. So let's take a quick check on the most important creature of the house. How you doing, Sam? I'm going to take that as a positive answer.